Now, this question here, um, maybe some of you went through it because it's early in the exercise and didn't bat an eyelid, but there's a lesson to learn here, a couple actually. So I just want to focus on it, even though it's a remarkably simple question, okay? We want to differentiate this log function. And it's not just log x, simple log x and nothing else. It's got a tiny little adjustment here. It's x divided by 2. Now there are two ways to do this question. I'm going to show you both in a second. Um, first, I'm going to start you off with the way that's a little sort of the scenic route. Okay? The scenic route is uh, x on 2 is not just regular x. It's a, it's a function of x. I've done something to it. So therefore, one of my instincts is, I guess I could use chain rule on this, right? It's a function of function. Log of, that's a function. X on 2, that's also a function, okay? Now, I remember, because I wrote it down about 40 minutes ago, that the derivative of the log of a function has a pretty nice, easy law to remember out of it. It's a fraction, what's on the numerator? F dash, very good. And then on the denominator, F of x, okay? f dash on f because you'll very quickly get tired of saying on of x. Now, have a look here. This is my f of x in here. The guy inside there, that's f of x. So x on 2, that's a half multiplied by x. What's f dash in this case? It's just, it's just a half. That's what's going on, going on the top of my numerator, okay? Um, you can see, even though it seems a bit Overkill, I put brackets around this half. Can anyone tell me why I've done that? What's going to go on the denominator? It's going to be f. So on the numerator, I have a fraction. On the denominator, I have a fraction. Fractions on fractions, you're asking to be confused or to communicate not very clearly because we don't always write a nice long uh, fraction line, vinculum, in the middle of an exam when we're in a rush. So this is completely unambiguous. We know what this is. Okay? There is the derivative. I can write this simpler though, can't I? What would you like me to do to the top and bottom? Let's take the top and bottom and multiply both by 2. That'll get rid of all my fractions. So that leaves me with 1 over x. Now at this point, I'm a little perplexed because I know the function that I should differentiate that gives me 1 over x. That's like a really important basic function. And it's not this guy, right? The function that I differentiate, the primitive, um, of 1 over x is just, it's just regular log x, right? Without any onto, without any weird other stuff in there, that's what's supposed to get me to, well it does get me to 1 over x. So why does this also get me there? Okay. Hmm. Have a look at this for me. Here is log x. Okay. Now, um, this is a good opportunity to note that the derivative of log x is 1 over x, but with an asterisk on it, with a terms and conditions apply. Because 1 over x exists in some places that log x does not. You see that? There's a domain restriction on this. What is it? x is greater than 0, right? But 1 over x exists for x is less than 0 as well. Okay, so we actually should put that, now's as good a time as any. You won't, um, you won't lose marks for, for not writing this, but you should write it because it actually makes a difference. We'll come back to this point later on. Um, this thing only exists here, so therefore its derivative only exists there as well. Make sense? Now, log of x on 2, what does that look like? Well, that's what it looks like. Now just Engage your visual mind for a second and work out with me what is the difference between log x and log of x on 2. Okay? Now, on a first look, just a first glance, to me, my brain thinks that the red graph, log of x on 2, is the black graph but moved to the right. That's what my brain thinks like it looks like to me. Okay, Because like, I'm like, look, they're there, they're there. That sort of makes sense, right? But there is a reason, a visual reason, you can look at that and you can know that that is actually not what's going on. It has not moved to the right. This is not a right positive translation, a horizontal translation. It's a vertical translation. Can anyone tell me how, just looking at the picture, not worrying about algebra or laws or anything like that, how can this picture convince you that you have not moved to the right at all? You've actually moved down. Can anyone see? This graph is missing something, isn't it, right? If I were to actually submit this as like an answer, um, if I went back to log of x, then 
a really important feature of log of x is the fact that it has an asymptote, right? By the way, in case you didn't know, sorry, bear with me, x equals zero. There we go. Done. Um, Desmos can do dotted lines, so if you're fancy and all that kind of thing. Uh, you can hardly see it on the projector, which is a shame, but anyway. There is my asymptote for log of x. And you can clearly see now, bless you, that log of x on 2 has the same asymptote. Do you notice that? So for example, just imagining, if this is 1 and this is 2, which it is, um, if you were to do one unit to the right, okay, then the asymptote should come with you. It should also have gone over, right? But it has not. Look, it just blows straight through it, right, if it were there. Um, and you can see there are other reasons why it's inconsistent. It's not one unit to the right here. That's not one unit, right? And neither is this, for that matter. Okay? So there is no horizontal translation. It is only vertical. Now, how can we show this um, using what we have over here? This is the scenic route. This is a long way of doing it. There is a simpler way. Uh, and this is something that Ari and I were talking about before. An overall principle for you, this is so important, it's worth writing, is even though I hate the word, I'm going to use it anyway, because it's the only one that fits in this context, it's rather than going straight to calculus, straight to differentiating, if you possibly can, simplify first, then differentiate. I'll give you a really obvious example of this. Okay? Uh, I have to use the word simplify even though I dislike it because um, you have to apply this to a broad range of different functions for which simplify means different things. So here's an example. If I gave you this, is this what I gave you, Aaron? I can't remember. Something like that. Okay. If I gave you this and I asked you to differentiate, not a trick question, as it's written right now, what rule must you use to differentiate this? You must use the quotient rule because it's a quotient, yes? And you go u, and then you get v, and then you start going, and then the sun sets, and you're like, I don't want to do it this way. I don't have to write this as a quotient. I can simplify before I start differentiating, yeah? What knowledge would I need to use? I could factorize. There's an e to the x here, and I can take it out of the numerator, right? Um, even simpler than that, I can just start cancelling, right, without having factorized. e to the 2x divided by e to the x is going to be just e to the, look at your indices, it's going to be x, right? What about this guy? You're going to be left with e to the 3x, right? No quotients in sight. And this is like, this is like the easiest thing to differentiate. This is fine, okay? Simplify, then differentiate. Now, how would you apply it to this? If I said to you, okay, is there something I can do with this before I actually launch into calculus, what would you do? Think back to your log laws. Look at it carefully. See, see that x on 2? See that x on 2? When you divide inside there, that's called the argument, by the way. It's very seldom used in this context, but that's what it is. When you've got a fraction there in the argument, you can break this one log into two. Now, usually that's a messier thing. Usually, having two logs is inferior to having one log, right? It's longer to write, right? But do you see how in this context it is simpler? Do you see it? What's the derivative of log x? 1 over x. What about this minus log 2? What does it do? It shifts it vertically, right? It's gone downwards log 2. So remember how I showed you? Um, when you um, go across, you're like, oh, it's a different shift all the way. It's not a horizontal shift at all. Okay. Look carefully if you can. Watch through here. Look at the vertical distance. Do you see the vertical distance? Always the same, always the same. It's always log 2. I think it's like 0 0.67, so I don't know. It's, it's a small amount, okay? So this is what's happening. It doesn't contribute anything to the derivative, so ta-da, I'm finished. Okay, does that make sense? So I wanted to point out, you know, if you look at something here, don't immediately, like you're, you're starting to learn laws. You're like, I'm going to use laws, cool. But, but pause for a moment. We try and avoid the question rule everywhere we can. So you guys are quite good at that now. But other ones are not so obvious. It is not because log laws are something that people are historically bad at. It is not obvious that you should manipulate this with log laws before you differentiate. So I'm trying to actively get you to look at it now.